Hello, it's Valerie from Shadowbrook Handcrafted Soap in Nova Scotia. And today I'm going to be making an oatmeal fig soap, an oatmeal stout I'm going to be using for some of the lye liquid. And uh, I also stewed a bunch of figs and strained them uh, to add as well. And uh, I also wanted to talk about, I've been asked a lot about additives, how I go about adding additives. To talk about that would be a long video just in itself because there's so many additives you can use. Um, so I'll just briefly touch that this morning in this soap and in a couple other things because there's, uh, there's fruit and vegetables you can use in your soap. There's many, many different kinds of liquids. Uh, there are infused oils, there's clays, there's herbs all kinds of botanicals, uh, eggs, milks, yogurt, um, many, many things. So a couple of things I'm going to talk about is this oatmeal stout I'm using. Is uh, The reason why I'm using it uh, is just because it's really good. It boosts lather, but also um, the stout and beer have hops. They're made with hops, and um, it's also full of amino acids, which are really good for your skin. They're softening agents. The other thing uh, is oatmeal. I'm uh, actually I'm not using colloidal oatmeal in this or oatmeal flakes. I'm going to cook and strain my oatmeal, and uh, from that I'm going to get the oatmeal jelly or mucus. And I just love that in soaps. It's good for sensitive skin, and it's uh, it's not scratchy. So I tend to use that a lot when I make oatmeal soaps. The other thing I'm going to add is some uh, silk fiber. And that adds slip and glide, and it's truly beautiful. Now, I have two different kinds, and I'm just going to come up to the camera and show you. This one here looks more like matting, and it's Tussin Oil Silk Fiber. This is Mulberry Silk Top Grade AAA. Whoops, kicked the video camera. So you can see there's a big difference in those two silks, and there's a big difference when I use them in batter as well. This one. I always probably need to strain and this one rare. This one here, fabulous. The Mulberry Silk Top. Um, so this is the oatmeal stout I'm going to be using for my liquid. And uh, when you use beer or alcohol, uh, wine, stuff like that, because of the carbonation and the alcohol, when you're adding your lye to it, it, it should be as flat as can be. You should have it cold. Uh, I will show you when I start to do add my lye to it, and uh, I'm going to put it in a container, which is setting in a bowl, which is setting in a bunch of ice. And I will add it real slow and stir it periodically until it's all added. Uh, I have boiled it. I have simmered it. Uh, I have frozen it. But for me, particularly, I don't like to boil it because I think you boil out the goodness of it. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. It's just personal opinion. Um, the other thing that I said I was going to add was figs. And uh, here's my fig liquid. And what I did with that, I took a whole bunch of figs and I stewed them until I got a real syrupy stuff. And that's going to add lather because it's uh, sweet and sugary. But figs are also really good for the complexion. They, uh, they help add moisture. Let me see what else did I find out. Uh, they soften the skin as well. And um, let me see, what else was I going to tell you about? Uh, yogurt. Here's another additive I'll be adding. Um, I've read that I add this after the cook at room temperature or out of the fridge. Room temperature is my favorite. Uh, it's uh, plain and it has no synthetics in it from what I can tell. Uh, it helps to add creaminess and it helps to loosen your batter and it, uh, some of that will convert to sodium lactate. Milks are fabulous for soaps. My favorite milks are coconut milk. This one here has no sugar in it. Homemade is fabulous, coconut milk. Uh, so my two favorite milks are coconut milk and jasmine rice milk. I find that coconut milk boosts lather phenomenally and adds, uh, if you have an unscented soap, it can just add a nice 
really light hint of a, just a beautiful smell in it. Uh, jasmine rice milk is fabulous and silky. I find it's great for skin as well. Um, some of the other things that I'll just touch on, and by the way, I don't follow a script, as you can tell. I probably should because uh, I can get digress and not remember what I'm talking about, but I wouldn't be, I don't think I'd be as comfortable with that because I'd always be following a check schedule and uh, I don't think I'd be really good at that. So uh, I do say some things that probably don't flow and um, I should actually write in text afterwards on the, the video. But this is, uh, these videos aren't for perfection. They're to show you what I do. They're to encourage you to make great for the skin soap. Um, to encourage you and to help you out. And maybe there might be some information that might be able to help you along the way. So if you're watching this, I would encourage you to watch other people's videos too. Valerie Holdren and I were just talking the other night and uh, she uh, makes great homemade soap as well and she has videos out there so I'd encourage you to watch that. Uh, Tina Monica has really good videos uh, on hot process and other soaps as well. So it's good to watch videos, to read, to research and to experiment and try different things. But always, always make great soap. And to me, a great soap is one that doesn't dry your skin out, but moisturizes it and helps it and helps to condition it. And maybe it doesn't moisturize, but it can help condition it and nourish it. So to me, it would be low cleansing. And that word means low drying, low stripping, and higher conditioning with a good amount of super fat. And of course, that will vary on the different soaps that you make. So getting back to additives, and someday I am going to do a video just on additives and we'll talk about that. But honey is really good additive. It, uh, it's great for bubbles and lather. I like to add it most of the time after it's below 175 because then I can keep the properties of it. And uh, I will add it at one tablespoon and more. And I actually learned that from Valerie Holdren that you can use way more than one tablespoon per pound of soap which is lovely. Maple syrup is awesome and it's antibacterial. You can use molasses, barley malt, uh, all of those things are great. I usually always add sodium lactate to my soaps and sodium lactate is not just help it harden but it's great for aging skin and to help condition. It's just super lovely stuff. Uh, I always add sugar to my soaps. I mix one tablespoon per pound and I will, if I got a three pound soap, I'll add three tablespoons of sugar mixed with two tablespoons of something, whether it's water, tea, aloe vera juice, or apple cider vinegar. Love apple cider vinegar in soaps. I use quite a bit of it in my shampoo bars. It's antibacterial, antifungal. It boosts lather. It's great for the skin. It's just lovely. It will, has a tendency to turn the batter uh, a bit beiger, but no worries. Aloe vera juice or aloe vera gel, beautiful stuff. Uh, you can use clays or activated charcoal. Herbs like rosemary and spinach, usually use those for colors and scent, the rosemary. Um, I do use goat milk. That's the other thing I wanted to say about milks. I do use goat milk, but rare. Uh, and when I had my own goats, I loved using the fresh goat milk. But only now I use it in a couple of formulas for people that request it. Egg is really good. Egg yolk adds protein and just beautiful properties, creaminess and lather to soaps. Um, now getting to fruits or vegetables that you can use, avocado puree is awesome in soaps. And uh, that brings creaminess and minerals, protein and moisture. Papaya is lovely. It is a uh, really good for healthy skin, for brightening your skin or as an exfoliant. Figs, I already talked about that. Banana is absolutely beautiful, although it will darken your soap quite a bit. But it conditions and it's antioxidant, it's a moisturizer. It's great for rough, dry skin. Carrots are lovely. Carrots are beautiful. They're great for acne, moisture. They're supposedly good for protection from UV rays as well. And I could just go on of different things that you could use because it's never ending, really. Um, 
Then I was asked, how do I incorporate those into my formula? So today, I'm going to talk about this soap. But normally how I work additives into my soap is like this. I'll make up my formula and I'll get the total liquid amount, whether I am doing it at 35, 36, 37, 38, 40 percent liquid. This one I'm doing at 37 percent and I might change my mind and up that to 38 depending. So it's a three pound batch and the amount of liquid is going to be 17.75 ounces. What I do with that is I break it down to what I want to add and I always take into consideration always always my lye amount which is uh, going to be 6.55 ounces. When you mix li your lye with your liquid, you must have, you must have at least the same amount of liquid as you do lye so it can dissolve properly. I always add more than that. So 6.55, so I'm going to want at least 6.55 ounces of liquid. Now I know I'm going to add coconut milk to this soap and I'm going to be adding cooked strained oatmeal and I'm going to be adding fig syrup. So what I do is I worked backwards from that and I took the 17.75 ounces and um, because I want mostly stout of liquid in this I took that into consideration and I worked with it a bit and I came down to this that I'm going to use 2.75 ounces of coconut milk, 3 ounces of cooked strained oatmeal, 2 ounces of fig syrup, which left me with 10 ounces of stout that I'm going to mix my lye with. Once that's mixed, I'm going to put that in my soap and I'll probably use um, the oatmeal is going to go in the cooked soap as well. And um, I still haven't decided whether I'm going to put that fig syrup in there or hold it back. So after the cook, that'll be my liquid. My silk is going to go into my lye liquid. My sugar I'm adding after the cook. Yogurt is added after the cook. Sodium lactate is added after the cook. I'm also adding honey and um, lanolin and barley malt. And I'm going to be adding a tablespoon of honey, a tablespoon of lanolin, and a tablespoon of barley malt. None of those are deducted from my liquid amounts and I'm going to mix two tablespoons of aloe vera juice with it and with my sugar I'm going to add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar not deducted. Um, I still haven't decided what I'm going to scent this with uh, but I am adding two ounces of pure almond extract and that acts like a solvent but I'm going to add that probably when the heat is down around 150, 160 Fahrenheit so I can keep as much as I can of the almond scent in there. Um, the other thing I plan to do, I was going to color this a bit for a swirl, but I think I'm just going to add some soap gratings to make it look like, you know, bits of oatmeal in the soap, although it will be soap, so it won't be scratchy. Uh, so that's my basic explanation. Super fat was one other thing I'm just going to mention. This is going to be super fatted at 8%, even though the cleansing on this is a 10, which means dryness is a 10. Conditioning is a 60, and I'm still going to super fat that at 8%. I'm going to super fat 5% up front, which you can put into a soap calculator, and then I calculated 3% extra super fat for after the cook. How you calculate that is you take your total amount of oils, which is 48 ounces, and you multiply it by 3%, and that amount will be your extra super fat to add after the cook. I add it hot and it's going to be 1.45 extra ounces of super fat after the cook. That's basically it. Um, so I'll see you in a few minutes and I know it's a bit of a long explanation but I just wanted to touch on the additives. Just a basic short description of why you can use or why you would want to add additives and what I'm using in this soap. So we'll see you in just a few minutes. Here we are my sink is full of ice. I have a bowl. I have my flat stout, oatmeal stout. Safety gear, glasses, my ice. And this is going to be poured very slowly. So I'm just going to start this. I'm not going to do the whole process of putting this in. But when you're adding this, it's very important to add it real slowly. 
and just take your time and doing it. Now mine is not cold and it wasn't in the freezer so it's going to take me a bit longer. And uh, I'll just start it off and then I'll shut the camera off and we'll uh, I'll bring you back when the lye is all done. So just little by little as you start to stir and this lye is going to heat up that stout a lot. My silk is in there and remember uh, to work in a well ventilated area and lye is very dangerous if you get that on your skin make sure that you wash it with water if it gets in your eye because you're not wearing glasses then make sure that you flush it and get to a hospital right away okay so I'm just going to show you that and I'll bring you back when I go to add it to the heated oils now I'm going to add the lye liquid of that oatmeal stout to my oils. My oils are around 161, 162 Fahrenheit and the lye is around 180. Just gonna pour that in. Actually have a lot of uh, soy wax in this and that helps to make the soap creamy and harden it as well it's actually the most soy wax I've ever used in a recipe it's a seven percent usually I use only around three and I'm just gonna stick blend that just so you can see the color once it's stick blended and then uh, I'll bring you back on the individual stages. You can see some of that oatmeal jelly floating on top. And you can see where that's going to be a real dark brown color. But it won't be that dark once it's cooked. And I will be adding some cocoa to part of the batch. Okay, so I'll bring you back at the next stage. So as you can see, that is uh, starting to rise up. And I'm just going to stir that down. Hopefully I'm going to stir it down. And uh, just keep an eye on it. So basically right now what you're looking at there it's just a bit of uncooked, but that's applesauce. Looks like applesauce. Not applesauce, but it looks like applesauce. And I'll bring you back when it's potato stage. So as you can see, this soap is cooking extremely fast. And within a space of 30 seconds, it's gone from applesauce to applesauce potato and um, it is almost all potato right now and uh, you can see that I keep a spray bottle because spray bottles actually help you can see that rising up spraying water will actually help control that you stir it you want to make sure you get a hit of that so it doesn't come out of the pot This is cooking way faster than I thought. I knew this was going to cook fast, but I actually did not think it would cook this fast. So that is potato stage. So that tells me that Vaseline stage is right around the corner. And it's probably because of the high amount of palm oil I used and the high amount of soy wax. And there we go. Just like that. Vaseline stage. Wow. I actually think that was maybe five minutes, maybe less, but uh, not even high, high temperatures, as you can see, just on warm in my crock. And there we go. Vaseline, thick Vaseline. So I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm just going to let that set and get my additives. And I have them over in hot water and a frying pan on my stove. And I'm going to clean the sides down of this and cover it up and I'll bring you back.
keep a cover on my soap so it can be nice and moist. I don't know if you can see that beautiful dark Vaseline. It's really thick. Now I'm going to add my uh, sugar and ACV, which is hot. So that's three tablespoons of sugar with two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And when I shut the camera off, I tested this for lye. Uh, there was absolutely no lye left in this. No zap, mild as could be. I always do that. Uh, sell soaps, I like to make sure everything's okay. I use the soaps all the time. I want to make sure they're okay for me, me and my children as well. So this is really thick. Beautiful color. It will lighten up. And I'm going to mix this all in. Uh, then I'm going to add my yogurt, which is at room temperature. And um, let me see what else. I'm going to add my yogurt and my sodium lactate. I'll just show you me doing those. The yogurt is at room temperature. And the sodium lactate was uh, warmed up in my hot water. There's different ways you can add your yogurt. Uh, everybody has their own way of doing things, what they prefer best. I've tried it a few different ways. I've also tried my sodium lactate a few different ways. I might change it in a little while, but right now I add it along with my yogurt. Heat it up. Now when you add your yogurt, you want to make sure you stir that in really well because you don't want pieces of it cooked in there. And this is my sodium lactate, warmed up. I'm going to add that and let that set for a few minutes so the temperature can come down on that batter. And I'll bring you back when I go to add my coconut milk and the other additions that I'm going to put in here. Now I'm going to add my hot coconut milk. When I'm adding coconut milk and it's still in the crock, even though my crock pot is off, I always make sure I stir it in little by little because I've had it cook on the bottom of the crock, crock pot before because of the heating element. So I'm usually quite careful to make sure my milk gets uh, stirred in really well so it's not sitting on the bottom. And when that happened, I ended up cooking, picking pieces of cooked coconut out of my soap, coconut milk. Not fun. At least they showed up good. Thinking I should have cooked this at 38%, but it's still pretty thick. I'm not planning a big design on this one. I'm just going to add the natural soap gratings to it to make it look like oatmeal in it. And uh, basically plop it in the mold and do a chopstick swirl. I'm going to try it just a chopstick swirl. I'm not too worried about the look on it. Stir this up. And I'm just going to let the temperature come down a bit because it's still at about 185 before I add my honey and my figs to this. And I'll bring you back when I do that. The temperature of my batter right now is about 165, 167. So I'm going to add my uh, warmed up lanolin honey and barley malt to this with the aloe vera juice in it. I find lanolin uh, lends a really nice sheen to the soap, but it's also so really good to the skin. And instead of one tablespoon, I actually ended up just putting two teaspoons in this. No particular reason. I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to change that. But I've certainly done that before. And uh, this is my fig syrup that I did. And I'm just going to add, I'm not going to add all of that in there because I want to save it for the six cups of batter that I'm going to take out. So I'm going to put probably 
half of that in there. And those were uh, heated up. The fig uh, syrup was also heating up in my frying pan with the hot water in it. Sure smells good. I don't have anything in it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait till that heat comes down just a bit more before I add my almond extract. I want it to around 160, 159. I'm going to stir this up really good. Dig it up from the bottom. And then I'm going to spray it with some warm water and cover it again. And I'll bring you back when it's temperature's ready for me to add the other things. Separate and design. I'm going to add my uh, 2.5 uh, ounces of pure almond extract along with 0.1 ounce of ylang ylang and 0.05 of patchouli. It smells really lovely and I'm hoping this will just add a slight subtle lovely soft scent and complement this oatmeal. Oatmeal fully loaded. Hot process soap. So as you can see, that batter is quite dark. Um, I know people will say that that almond extract won't last, but I've used it like this before. And uh, you may not smell it strong. It will depend on how much you use, what else is in your batter, what type of soap it is. But you can definitely smell a hint of it in oatmeal soaps that I have made when you're using it. So um, this is not going to be what people would like to call a pourable batter. I don't aim for that. Pourable batters. Some, some I have real loose. Some I have pourable. But mostly I just aim for manageable. And this is very manageable. Lovely. Lovely sheen on that too. So what I'm going to do right now, just going to give that a quick spray with warm water. And this can be your friend in hot process for sure. I found out over quite a few years that using that is uh, beneficial to keep dryness off the side of the pot. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go get my heated container and I'm going to get the cocoa and the rest of my fig syrup and I'm going to start to design this soap. And it's going to be a little tricky I think but uh, we'll work with it and see what happens. So my aim is to put about uh, three cups of this three or four cups in here and uh, so it will be lighter I'm not going to add anything to it and then what's left in the pot which will be about five or six cups of soap I'm going to add the rest of the fig syrup and uh, the cocoa that I did up it's one teaspoon of cocoa with teeny tiny bit of glycerin a few drops of glycerin and some water and actually I'm just going to add uh, a tablespoon of water to that because it looks real thick in there Ouch. All right, so I added a tablespoon of uh, scalding hot water to that cocoa. And let's see what happens here. So let's see, can you see me in there? Yeah, you can. So in this one here, it's filled with scalding hot water to keep it warm. I found that uh, heating everything up helps, helps to maintain a really nice manageable batter. And this is the one I'm not going to color. I just got to keep telling myself that as well. So I'm just going to see, I uh, wonder if you can see that without my arm being in the way. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to pour about, I'm just going to eyeball about three cups, I think. And not to worry about me and my bare hands. There's no, absolutely no lye left in this hot process soap. And uh, the batter that I'm picking off there is okay. If I were to stick my hand in the, in the finger of that, it would be a different story. And that smells lovely. I'm just going to give that a spray and cover that up with these... Uh, shampoo hair covers. That's not what they are, but that's what they remind me of. 
And uh, then in this, I'm going to add the rest of that fig syrup. that I had, two ounces, and I'm going to add the cocoa, because I would like a bit of contrast. Probably won't darken it up much. And actually, I'm going to shut that camera off and mix up with just a bit more cocoa with that. I mixed up just a bit more cocoa. A bit more, just to make it, uh, give it more of a uh, contrast. And it is difficult working with darker batters because you just... You just don't know. Is that dark enough? Is it not dark enough? So sometimes you just got to play with it if you haven't done it before. Okay, that's beautiful there. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to bring over my... These are uh, little pieces chopped off of uh, different natural soaps I've done just in the last little while. I'm just going to give them a tiny spray of water for adding and hopefully that they will adhere better to the soaps. And then I'm just going to throw them in like this. And I'm thinking I probably don't have enough chopped up, but uh, that's all right. I just wanted it for a bit of contrast. And I'm just gonna briefly give them a stir around in there. I'm hoping that I don't over mix it. And this one's thicker batter than the one in the pot. That could create a bit of havoc, maybe, maybe not. Because when you have batters that are just different... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shut that camera off again, and my apologies, because I'm going to mix up some more, some more gratings here. I'll be right back. This is my three-pound mold. And I uh, added probably three quarters of a cup of more of gratings. And I'm just actually just going to pour some in, layer them like that, and do a quick chopstick swirl. And I, I tell you, I am not good at chopstick squirrels. I don't know, chopstick stick swirls. I actually don't know why. I just can't seem to get them to look right now. Valerie Holden is just super on, on the chopsticks. But uh, I'm not. Maybe this time it'll be different. I don't know. Can you still see me in there? Yep. Oh, get out of it there. Okay. You can see I'm just layering one on top of the other. Now, when I'm designing, I try to be real careful about how much I bang my mold. So, in this case, I don't have to worry about that because I'm not worried about any swirls that are going to be damaged in it. But if I'm doing a design where I have ribbons of color and I want like a butterfly swirl or something like that, then once I design it, I don't usually bang it afterwards. Because I don't, uh, I think it was, uh, just trying to think who t said that, maybe I only. I had watched her one time and she said that that can make your swirls be angular. Like, I'm going to bang this on the floor. Basically, that's just to get air bubbles out. And uh, 
Got a really neat thing here. These are steel straws my sister got me for Christmas. So who knows what this is going to look like, but this is my idea of a chopstick swirl because I don't have a chopstick. So basically, just go around and around. I'm going to change the direction of that. Uh, let me see, how did I do that? Okay, so who knows, but... Uh, Hopefully, I can blow the soap out of that. Hopefully, it didn't get in the hole. <laughs> I wouldn't be want to drink him with that afterwards and have soap. And, uh, and try to fit the rest in here. It's going to be a lot of soap because of the soap gratings. I'd like to get a puck out of there, too. Let's see what's happening here. Bit of warm spray. Probably not so warm right now. And um, just some curly cues back and forth across the top. Pretty rough top. But that can look really good too. I'll show you the cut of my soap on the video. Thank you for joining me today for this oatmeal fully loaded with additives soap. Have a blessed day. Thank you, honey, for videotaping. Bye-bye. Here's the puck from that uh, oatmeal fully loaded with cooked oatmeal and oatmeal stove and the figs, oatmeal and figs, and it's a uh, lovely lovely feel to it. Uh, whoops. Some cold water, although that doesn't matter. I should be able to get lather from cold as well as, whoops, as well as from hot. It's certainly bubbling up lovely. Yeah, I shut that off. So there's the puck. There's the lather, incredibly thick. I don't know if you can see how that stands up so good. That's how thick that is. You see that, sweetheart? Beautiful. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.